Welcome back as we get into a very important discussion. As we get the ball rolling on this Monday, we welcome for the first time for 2024. Uh, we. I did not have a chance to touch base with Eddie Stewart just yet, so I'm happy he's on. He's given us the time this morning. Eddie Stewart, the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association, TTRNA. Eddie, great to see you. Happy New Year and welcome. Pleasant New Year and a, a wonderful Monday. Thanks so much for having me. Pleasant morning to you and others. Pleasant morning. I know sometimes, uh, well, at least in the past, uh, we would have conversations and you'd bring up some of the issues. And we look forward to that later on, but I recognize, at least based on something you have been pushing for for quite a while, at least the ball is rolling. Cabinet finally approved the transfer of the nursing education program currently offered by the nursing education unit, the NEU. So it's being moved now. Costata will be taking over from what we understand, and this is from all indications here via our notes something that it seems uh, you've been fighting for and based on the development i'm sure that's that's great news it is tremendous news jw it is really um a most historic time for nursing and military personnel and as you would have rightly indicated this is something the association has been pushing since uh, 2016 and we would have been lobbying several ministers, several ministers of education. And this is why we are so thankful that this current minister of education, uh, Dr. Nayan Gatsby Dolly, has, and cabinet has taken the decision to finally move nursing and military personnel out of, under the Ministry of Education. It was actually a ministry training persons. No other ministry does that but it was only happening in nursing, where a ministry, it was actually a school, it was the ministry training nursing personnel, and now they would be moved over to Costa. And as one would have expected, a ministry cannot grant any qualification higher than a certificate. So why, where nursing and military personnel would have been going and, and undertaking more or less among the same amount of courses, spending the same amount of time, writing the same final exam. Unfortunately, because they came out of Ministry of Education, they were only given a certificate as their qualification, whereas their counterparts will be all being given associate degrees and degrees. It was really unfortunate. And even with being trained on any ministry, and it's not been really a, a proper school as it would. They were forced to be trained in, in malls, shopping malls. We had our nursing folks that be trained in shopping malls in Frederick Street. Really unacceptable, no proper library facilities, no proper infrastructure, computer labs, and lab, none of these things were present. No proper oversight of the program. They were being trained in Palms Club. You would have feds going on for Carnival, uh, on the Sunday night, at Monday morning, nursing personnel would be <laughs> encouraged to go to get their tuition there. It was really un unacceptable. So we're really thankful that this period, um, and this is something very government of Trinidad and Tobago would have signed on to in CARICOM via COSA on the 28th of April 2006 in St. Pete's Nevis, Trinidad and Tobago government as the rest of the CARICOM diaspora would have signed on to an agreement where they recommended and move, or moving forward that a bachelor's in nursing would be the new entry requirement for nursing. They would have moved away from the certificate, moved away from the apprenticeship style program, and moved towards having a bachelor's as the minimum entry requirement. Let me ask you. Let me ask you, based on this uh, transfer and the disestablishment, as it were, we understand it will be gradual. Uh, we got that confirmation there from the, the Minister of Education. She says uh, it will be gradual to ensure no disruption in the delivery of courses currently being delivered by the NEU. How, how gradual? Um, any further word any more in terms of that development is going to be within the calendar year? Is this going to be 
into next year. Uh, walk me through the actual timing, even though, of course, I know it's great news. Uh, let's, let's just go through the timeline well, now. Well, yes. Well, unfortunately, the association has not been provided with that information. We still are challenged in trying to be able where, whether it's good or bad, governments generally um, don't utilize stakeholders in that fashion, unfortunately. Um, despite TTRN actually filing an injunction against the school, and that is what kind of pushed everything to where it is now. We would have filed an injunction because it was operating illegally. It was not registered with the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. So we would have filed legal action late last year, and this is what kind of preempted all of this. So while we continue to write, it was only last Monday, I would have written to the Minister of Education asking for an update, asking to let us resolve this. This doesn't have to go to court. This doesn't have to remain in court. The court always encourages parties to dialogue. It saves the court's time. It saves cost. It saves cost to the country. And, and, and really, while we are extremely happy that they have finally taken this decision, all of that information has not come to us as yet. They indicate that it will be gradual. We want to ensure the the lecturers who are not, have not already retired, because imagine, um, out of the lecturers who were there, three quarters of them had already retired, and they were just being brought back for three months, three months. So it's really only a quarter of the lecturers who are still um, below 60, and we hope that they are absorbed into COSTAT. We, we hope all of the students are absorbed into COSTAT. We hope all of the programs. Now, this is a very important issue for the association because the ministry school, while it was unregistered, unaccredited, all of that, they were the only school offering a number of these specialty programs. And they were offering these programs, as we indicated, upstairs at Mall on Fletcher Street. And if these programs are not restarted, if it's not continued, you would end up having a ripple effect where there is a continued shortage, because there's already a shortage of specialist nurses, your pediatric nurse, your eye intensive care nurse, your trauma nurse, dialysis nurse. That is the only school that was offering these programs. So we hope those programs are one of the first programs that are brought over in a timely fashion. Otherwise, we run the risk of not having adequate staff. As you know, nursing personnel continue to leave, and majority of these specialist nurses are the ones that continue to leave in mass, we need to constantly um, recruit and, and ensure these programs are, are maintained. Yeah? So we hope the minister finally um, meets with us. They, they, they indicate in their release that, yes, with stakeholders, not sure who's the stakeholders they're speaking with. It's certainly not us. We, the only communication we're having with them is through the courts, okay. Davis and all of these things. But at least, at least the ball is rolling in that regard, and we give yes. thanks for the development. So let's continue with timeline. I recognize the association would have put uh, two particular, at least not dates per se, but at least you have put the month out there in the public domain. So you're saying extra duties, mandatory work, uh, you want that back pay over time by June, and you're looking to upgrade folks from this temporary situation. All your stakeholders want that permanency. I mean, that is always a structured system. It's one where there is that sense of security in your job. You could now go to a financial, a financial institution and get the ball rolling with certain plans for your life. So you have put that permanent uh, scenario by March, and you're asking for the overtime by June. We in January. January is going to end in a couple of days. How are we looking in terms of the timeline given? Well, we are working steadfast towards our timelines. We have set ourselves. We believe as an organization, you must be responsive to your membership. We want to let the membership know what our goals is in nursing personnel. Because we continue to work on 2013 salaries in 2024, 11 years behind schedule, nursing personnel are really becoming demotivated and dejected that this is leading to this continued migration. So we have kind of given them our overall perspective as to where nursing is. We believe nursing would be going in the next couple of months and years. One of those things that you right indicated is the permanency exercise, which again, 
We are thankful that the government has finally, I mean, again, it had to deal with court actions. We would have taken a court action against the government, against a particular RNG, and we have won that. So most of these things that we are being successful with, it is because of court action. It, it has kind of spurned the ministry into action. But nonetheless, we are thankful. So one of, one of those things is the permanency in North Central, and we thank um, Mr. Davlin Thomas. He has executed the permanency exercise in North Central. Um, Brian Armour in Southwest, they have executed the permanency exercise in ERH is the same thing. So there are only two RHs outstanding. Tobago, Tobago is an issue because, again, they had stopped issuing permanency, but at least they were giving the same personal gratuity at the end of their contract. Northwest Regional Health Authority, who is run by none other than someone who has been in the news recently, Ms. Lisa Agard. Yes, Ms. Lisa Agard, um, former head of TSDT. She is also the head of Northwest Regional Health Authority. She's the chairman. And we would want to hear from her what is the timeline for Northwest, one of the last remaining RHs who have not instituted this exercise. So Again, if this is not done by prior to this date, unfortunately, we'll have to take legal action. In the so that's for the permanency. Um, the next, how are we looking, at, how permanency we looking for the exercise. overtime by June for mandatory work that would oh. have already been executed? Well, 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 it's, well, it's actually what we are, we are asking for is to be treated no differently from all of the other working staff within these RHEs to be paid for overtime. That is what we're asking for. What we have currently going on, when nursing personnel are mandated and nursing personnel cannot leave the job site, they must, once they are called upon to work overtime, they must work overtime, but they are not paid for it. They are given time back. So if you work for five extra hours, they will give you that five extra hours whenever they can. Let me ask you though, Idi, as you yeah. said, you know, must, um, I mean, some might say, well, if there's a personal emergency, if one really needs to go, can they, or is it stated, is it mandated that if overtime is required, you, you must stay on, on site at the hospital to, must to, to stay deliver? On site. Must. That is part, part of, of being a nurse. Because it's an essential service, you cannot leave the patient unattended. And with this crisis we have with nursing numbers, if you are the only nurse on the ward and no one is coming to relieve you, you must remain there. On for the, if it's the entire of the next shift, that does matter. So but Edie, you keep on tonight. Mm. Edie, and I'll let you continue, but I, I, you, you triggered something there in me, and you said it earlier, and, and I want you to again clarify because I always get two different stories when uh, I have this conversation. So I've heard you even last year when you mentioned that numbers are dwindling. I mean, my, my own cousin first cousin, she's in England now, um, you know, doing her nursing out there. So she left last year. But the Minister of Health, he comes on the program here with me, whether it's via Zoom or he sits on the couch and he says, well, that is not the case. He says there's no exodus, as they would have put it, of, of, of nurses and, and, and there's a full complement and, and all is covered. Uh, what do you say to, to, to the Minister's response? Well, I, I try to avoid um, commenting on some of the minister's statements. He has his job to do. Um, being Minister of Health, you have to do that PR to give the public the reassurance that there is not a crisis within the health sector. So I understand his job. We are the association and all nursing and military personnel, all healthcare personnel. In fact, most of the public would be aware that nurses are leaving because everyone probably have a relative who is a, a nurse, and, and everyone knows that we would have actually produced the evidence for this last, late last year, and we could go back to our social media pages, and we would have put up the number of nursing personnel leaving. The, the only thing I can uh, confirm that they are leaving in greater numbers in specific RHAs. So, for instance, in Southwest, in um, NCRHA and in end of ERHA, they're leaving, they are leaving much faster than they are leaving in ERHA and TRHA for some reason. Um, and, and again, it speaks to management styles, it speaks to how much they feel appreciated by the employer. So definitely there's a higher rate of migration in, in those three larger RHAs compared to the two smaller RHAs. But they are definitely leaving. Um, uh, and, and one cannot blame them. You are getting, but you are being denied permanency 
in your own country and England is granting you permanency as you reach there. Permanent employment for nursing personnel, permanent employment with pension. Um, um, stroke and cheese, um, when you, you begin to look at what is being offered, uh, when you go to some of these countries compared to if you stay here. So that's why we have to be so thankful for those nursing personnel who have the opportunity to go abroad and work and they choose to remain in Trinidad and Tobago. There are some who are not up to the standards, so they cannot leave. But definitely there's a larger proportion of nursing posts that are up to the standard. And they have, well, hopefully they are choosing to remain as opposed to leaving. Right now there's a backlog um, in terms of, uh, of visa applications for, for the US. That is only, some, the only reason why we don't see a lot larger numbers being uh, uh, leaving currently to go to the U.S., but they continue to leave. So that, that is a, a gift. But every time the minister makes that statement, the entire community just shakes our head and, and we laugh. And they always ask, but how come the minister can say that? But we really don't, you know, man, we have Edie, all to do as an association. Edie, let me ask you, in terms of uh, permanency, if it's an ideal scenario, uh, how long will it take for a nurse to go from being temporary to permanent, and what's in terms of some numbers you would have seen over the years where people would have been temporary for like how, how long before they could get to that place of permanency? Well, let me tell you in North Central, because it really started off in North Central, you have nurses who would have retired in North Central and not received any gratuity or back pay, and they would have been working in excess of a decade, in excess of a decade. Um, you have nurses as much as 13 years. I think one uh, patient care assistant told me she was working in North Central and she has not retired and she doesn't have a pension to go home to and she did not have a gratuity to go home to. Hopefully, um, now this exercise has been put in place. We have been given the assurance by the CEO, Daphne Thomas, that they're going to rectify a number of those instances. And yeah. if we know of anyone in that unfortunate circumstance, don't have a, a pension to live on um, to notify him. So we encourage persons to get in contact with us to try to rectify that in some way. It's going to cost the country a lot of money one would expect because it's over. Imagine not paying someone um, their, their just due for in excess of a decade. And this has been going on across all RHAs. So you can really imagine the enormous bill wow. that this has wrapped up. Well, Edie, I want to thank you as always, uh, President Stewart, for coming in, uh, giving us details, giving us the update. I'm sure we will touch base soon. We've got to run to the news now at 7. But keep us posted with all developments. I'm sure we will touch base very soon. All the best. Thanks for having me. That's right. President of the TTRNA, Edie Stewart, always giving and making the time to touch base and let us know what's happening. Up next, we get ready for our 7 a.m. news update. And after 7, traffic congestion in TNT and the economic impact. Details after the news. Are we going to